Hello everyone, welcome to this video. This presentation is entitled Closed Loop Audio Susceptibility of a DC DC Converter. This is another video in this series. Previously, we have seen how to obtain the input impedance of a DC DC converter in open loop and closed loop. Then, we studied how to obtain the output impedance of a DC DC converter also in open loop and closed loop. In the last video, we saw how to obtain the audio susceptibility of a DC DC converter operating in open loop. So today we are going to see how to calculate and how to verify the audio susceptibility of a DC-DC converter operating in closed loop. So in this video we will see first the introduction, then we will show how to obtain the closed loop audio susceptibility of a DC-DC converter by theoretical calculation. We will show an example and we will verify the theoretical calculation by LTS spice simulation. In the last video, we already saw why it is important to know the audio susceptibility of a DC DC converter. The audio susceptibility transfer function can provide us with information about how the output is going to evolve when we have a perturbation at the input. This perturbation can be a ripple superposed to the input voltage or it could be a transient step up or step down transient at the input. We also commented that this is very common in power factor correction applications in which at the output of the power factor corrector we have a ripple. So this ripple is going to be transferred into the output and we can calculate the output ripple using the audio susceptibility of the DC-DC converter at the corresponding frequency. We have also seen in previous videos the modeling of DC-DC converters from the input. We can model the converter using the input impedance and from the output we can model the converter using these three transfer functions. One is the output impedance, the audio susceptibility transfer function and the control to output transfer function. Another way to represent the behavior of our converter is by using the equivalent circuit in which we have the input impedance, the output corresponding to the control to output transfer function, the other voltage source corresponding to the audio susceptibility transfer function and the output impedance in series. So with this we have everything to analyze the converter operating in closed loop. So here we have our converter operating in closed loop. We are measuring the output voltage by using a sensor H. We compare this signal with the reference and then send the error signal to the compensator, then the PWM circuitry and final to the control to output transfer function. Now we are interested in getting the audio susceptibility transfer function in closed loop. So we make null the perturbations on the reference voltage and also on the output current. So we are applying zero voltage here and zero input here also and then we can obtain this relationship for the output voltage. The output voltage at this point is going to be the addition of this voltage VOD plus this voltage here, which is the input voltage times the audio susceptibility in open loop. The voltage that we get at this point can be calculated from the output voltage times H times minus 1 times the compensator transfer function and times the gain of the PWM circuitry and times the transfer function of the control to output. All these transfer functions multiplied corresponds to what we call the loop gain T. 
So we can get this expression here and from it we get finally the audio susceptibility in closed loop, which is this expression here, where t corresponds to the loop gain as shown by this equation. We could also have used the equivalent circuit to obtain the audio susceptibility in closed loop. Here we are showing again the sensor to measure the output voltage, the compensator, the gain of the PWM circuit, and then the control to output transfer function. So in this case, we are making null the reference voltage, the perturbations coming from the reference voltage, and also the perturbations coming from the output current. So this is uh, with output current equal to zero. So we are operating with the output in open circuit. So we can get exactly the same equations, and then we get this expression here for the audio susceptibility in closed loop. For the example, we are using the same values as in previous videos. Here we have in blue the different values of our converter and the different gains of the sensor the PWM circuit and also for the compensator we are using a PI compensator with this transfer function with these values here and it is implemented as shown here using an operational amplifier. So in order to obtain the audio susceptibility in closed loop we need to calculate the loop gain of our converter so in previous video, Power Electronics number 3, we have seen how to model the back converter in continuous conduction mode and we obtain the audio susceptibility in open loop with this expression here and also the control to output transfer function assumed by this other equation and with this we have everything to get the loop gain and then to use the loop gain to obtain the audio susceptibility in closed loop. We can obtain the audio susceptibility in closed loop at two important points which are at zero frequency and at infinite frequency. For this we are assuming that the compensator is going to have a pole at the origin to make null the error at steady state. So the gain of the compensator at zero frequency is going to be infinite. So from this the loop gain at zero frequency is going to be also infinite and therefore the audio susceptibility in closed loop at zero frequency is equal to zero, which is good because we are perfectly removing all perturbations at low frequencies. And also at very high frequencies, the loop gain is equal to zero. So the audio susceptibility in closed loop at very high frequencies is also equal to zero. So we are also making null any perturbation at very high frequency. Now we are going to calculate theoretically the audio susceptibility of our converter in closed loop. Here we have the WinPython script for this. We have the different values of our converter, the gain of the modulator, the parameters of the PI compensator, and then the control to output transfer function, the compensator transfer function, the gain of the sensor, and the open loop audio susceptibility the loop gain and finally the closed loop audio susceptibility transfer function. Here we are doing the plotting as usual and here we are printing several points for comparison with the simulation. And these are the results that we get. This is the magnitude of the audio susceptibility transfer function. So it is a very small. The maximum value is minus 20 dB. So we are compensating very well the perturbations coming from the input at all frequencies and here we have the phase of the audio susceptibility and these are different points 
of this characteristic at different frequencies. If you are not familiar with Win Python, please take a look at these two videos where you can find more information about how to use this program to do body plots. And now let's see the simulation results first using the actual circuit. As we show here, we have the switch, the diodes and all the elements with the compensator, a limiter, sending this information into the PWM generator and to the gate and driver. So here we have everything as we have seen also in previous videos. We use these statements here to get the perturbations at the output and at the input and from these perturbations we can get the audio susceptibility transfer function. Here we are calculating the magnitude of the transfer function and the phase also of the transfer function. If you are not familiar about how to obtain body plots with LTS pies, then please take a look at this video, LTS pies number 6. And also in this other video you can find information related to these elements that are from our Simulink compatible control library. And here are the results from the simulation of the actual circuit. This is the magnitude of the audio susceptibility and this is the phase. So we can see that the results that we get from the simulation are very similar to those from the theoretical analysis. We can also use the average circuit. Here we have this circuit using the current source for implementing the behavior of the switch and this is the voltage source corresponding to the diodes and the rest of the elements. So again we use this statement to get the perturbations and then from then we obtain the magnitude and the phase of the audio susceptibility. And these are the results of the simulation of the average circuit. So here we have the gain, the magnitude of the audio susceptibility, and this is the phase. And again, we can see that the results are very similar to the theoretical values. And finally, we can use the small signal circuit. Here we have the circuit as we have seen in the modeling of the back converter and we have used also this circuit in previous videos. So now we are doing an AC analysis. We use this parameter to inject a perturbation of one volt into the circuit and then by measuring the output we can finally get the transfer function corresponding to the audio susceptibility. And these are the results of the small signal circuit. This is the magnitude of the audio susceptibility and this is the phase. So we can see again that the results match very well the theoretical analysis. To represent the audio susceptibility, now we are plotting the output voltage over 1 because 1 is what corresponds to the amplitude of the perturbation that we are injecting, which is 1 volt. Well, this is all today in this presentation. I hope that you find this video useful. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.